After his first stint in federal prison, he never wanted to tell his story. After Joe Gagliano's second indictment, he realized his story had to be told. Since all coaches and athletes can potentially manipulate the margin by which they win or lose, point-shaving scandals are the game's worst of crimes. Arizona State University, home to big-time college sports and like virtually every other college campus, big-time sports betting by students and student-athletes. What happened is that two of ASU's star players won the Student Athlete of the Year, the other a minister's son committed the cardinal sin of college sports. Conspiring with a campus bookmaker and others to ensure ASU would not cover the betting line in four games during the 1993-94 season. College sports worst nightmare come true, as announced by Assistant U.S. Attorney Joe Lodge. Stevan Smith and Isaac Burton, two former basketball players at Arizona State University, have pled guilty to felony charges of conspiracy to commit sports bribery. Bookmaker Silman, who has pleaded not guilty, may have had two players in his pocket, but he needed money. Money to pay them off. Money to cash in on the games he thought he controlled. So he turned to money man Joseph Gagliano Jr., then a slick 26-year-old Chicago commodities trader. Gagliano wanted in, and in no time, according to his plea agreement, he brought more people, more money to the scheme. The government says Joseph Gagliano Jr., his father and a family friend came here to Las Vegas and hit the strip. By now, February 1994, the point shaving train was steaming out of control. Arizona State is doing everything it can to throw this game away. One source claims money man Gagliano had more than $1 million riding on a good kid gone bad. The truth is there's a heck of a lot more behind it that happened. The truth is there were there were relationships with bookmakers on the East Coast and in the Midwest. The truth is there was a ton more money bet in Vegas than what the government ever reported. It's Super Bowl weekend, there'll be a ton of action out there in Vegas, let's go do it. One game turns into two, and I thought I was done after the second game. Never thought there'd be a game three. I didn't really view it as wrong. I knew it wasn't exactly right, but I viewed different shades of right and wrong. Benny and I and a couple other guys pled guilty to some factual information. The government listed, you know, 72 counts on their indictment. They listed, I don't know, a few hundred thousand dollars bet in Vegas. Okay, that's great, but that's not the truth. Every choice I made, I knew it was wrong, but yet it provided instant gratification for me at that particular moment. But I did tarnish the NCAA. I did tarnish the integrity of the game. I got up on New Year's Day on January 1st, 2013, walked into my home office and started searching the top 10 ways to kill yourself. I'm a two-time felon. I'm not proud of that. Now here, my oldest daughter is 20 years old and she's dating, and she's dating a good kid, and, and the parents of the kid that she's dating actually Googled my name for some reason, I don't know why. And they're petrified of what they see. They think I am the devil in disguise. I made a few bad choices. That doesn't define who I am. It doesn't define my heart. It doesn't define my integrity. It doesn't define my character. There's much more to this story. Check it out at nograyareas.com.